Patrick Jackson's book came out in 2015 and really didn't pick up steam until around 2022. We sat down about a year ago and, and went over his amazing theory on orbs, UFOs, the paranormal, and how they're all related. He's got a great theory. It's pretty solid. You should check it out. We sat down here again and we went over more of his recent findings, his latest revelations, and what he's been working on since. This is his first interview, I think, since the last one he and I did. And you're in for a wild ride. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, time, time's gone quick, actually. Um, and I haven't actually done any more since, since your one either. I know, I know you kind of, you kind of went, you kind of went quiet, but I, I think that was by design, right? That wasn't something where you were just like, uh, you know, Hey, I'm not going to talk anymore. Cause, um, I think you got involved with some people that said you may, maybe you had to sign some NDAs. Maybe you had to sign some things where you were like, Hey, I can't talk about these things anymore. Right yeah, now. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> something um, like but, that. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but in saying that, uh, there's, there's going to be some news coming out about that soon, hopefully. So, good news, uh, I hope, right? Right? Yeah, uh, I think okay. so. Um, but yeah, it's 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 been a bit hectic. Um, right. But it had to be hard for two years not to say shit, though, right? I mean, because you know, honestly, I think your videos right now, currently, it's like the most viewed on my on my podcast, and your 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 um, video has like the most questions that I've always had, you know. And everybody is always asking, and me and you, and you're really good about you know talking you know, giving people info and basically you're like, go watch the video, <laughs> read my yeah. book. It's all here. Right. It's all there. Like I'm not yeah. hiding anything. It's right here. It's right there. Like what, what more do you want me to say? Exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, because the truth is, is that you, you give one person a detailed answer and then 10 minutes later, someone else will say this, ask the same question again. And you're just like, Oh, come on, just, just scroll up. <laughs> um, right? You're like, scroll up. It's right there. It's literally. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, after, after your one, I mean, I went through so much that I didn't really have much else to say. And, and there was other things happening afterwards. And so I just thought, well, you know, just see how that one goes and, and uh, carry on from there. So two years later, a lot has, a lot has happened. And um, now I'm on Twitter a lot more and uh, people, no, people, I'm starting to get the idea out there more. So. Yeah, uh, and people. I think people who can can understand it really just get it straight away, and other people just struggle to process it. And I don't know why, but that's the way it seems to be. Well, I think you were right because you and I mean, you and I wanted to when you reached out. You said, you know, you're an IT guy. I'm an IT guy. You know, we can talk about this at on a level that both of us understand, right? <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like both of us can. You know, we we can kind of understand this. Um, you know, from a technology standpoint, right. You know, and then from there, build that as the base and then from there, you know, that's right. build up from there. And I think we did a good job of that. You know, I think we did, you know, you and I, anyway, we kind of, like you said, if you get it, you get it, you know? Um, mm. and if not, you know, I think that, you know, everybody, you know, you can lead a horse to water, right. <laughs> but, you, but you can't but make that's it. Yeah. That's it. And, um, I mean, regarding all, all the sphere stuff anyway, I mean, it's worth noting that um, my book was written in 2015. Right. The news didn't really come out about the spheres till January 2022. Right. And it was at the UAP US hearings. Um, and so I was kind of a little bit ahead of my time anyway. And uh, the, the truth is, is that the spheres themselves are um, the major factor in UAP sightings. They're like the the main uh, the bulk of them. Um, and that's year they account for fifty two percent of all uh, recorded sightings. So it's understandable that the actual the US government or the, the world governments as a whole are kind of in a tough spot because it, they're kind of like in a rock and a hard place. It's uh, and really they can't really say anything. So I mean, I think the strategy is actually to let the civilians figure it out um, because ultimately it doesn't matter what a civilian says, right. Um, the next day, nothing changes. The markets don't change. Security doesn't change. You know, uh, people who are, if, if you want to say the more smart people will think about what you're saying and say, yeah, you know, you're probably right. And then you'll have reactive people who will just dismiss it. And you see, what, what I think the government really, really um, is worried about is um, reactive people. So all they're trying to do is stop people reacting. I mean, you look at how people behaved 
during the COVID pandem- uh, <laughs> so, pandemic. Yeah, you right. Buy a toilet roll to save your life. <laughs> <laughs> you had nothing to do with it anyway. I mean, I still, I still, still try to wrap my head around that. Why that was such a hot I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. bottled um, water, fine. Food, fine. Toilet paper, not happening. I just still doesn't. Oh, you know, if yeah. the government came out and said U- UFOs were real, I mean, <laughs> like corn dogs would make, you couldn't get a corn dog or something like what people are just oh. wild, right? Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, as I said, like, um, my observations and my analysis has actually, um, got the attention of a lot of people. And one of them was Gary Nolan, right. um, who actually said that, um, you know, in a Ross Coulter interview, mm-hmm that uh, I can go back 40 years and, and see these spheres and, and images right. which are triangulating on the UFOs. Um, and in fact, I, I bef- a year before the UAP hearings happened, the US UAP hearings, um, I actually gave a diagram to uh, Senator Gillibrand. Oh, Gillibrand. Okay, um, so you actually gave her like the, a, the diagram with the uh, spheres yeah. ar- surrounding a UFO? Well, I didn't give it to her personally, but a friend of mine gave it to her. Um, and... Uh, that was this one here, so I can show you this. Yeah, yeah. Let's check that out. Let me just share my screen. So that was prior. To, that was uh, prior to the hearing, like a year prior to the hearings. Yes. Wow. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so you see this? All oh, right. Okay. Yep. 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 Oh, move that. Oh. Okay. So yeah, you have the uh, type threes, which are um, they operate low to ground. Uh, they create an underlying data link. Uh, for the Type 1s. Um, they use buildings to shield the electronic emissions and signatures. Um, during high energy uplinks, they use actions to move people away, um, otherwise known as polygast activity, um, which is actually in alignment with the inverse square law of radiation. So what it's trying to do is move you away to stop you from getting hurt. Right. Uh, so so that gives you, you like the, that gives you the weird feeling, the spooky feeling, the ominous kind of... Uh, but I need to get out of here, right? That's kind of yeah, that, but also also more direct than that. Um, which I can show you. So I got I got video of that as well. Oh, rad. Okay. Um, yeah. So and what it does, it, it it creates like a dynamic network and move around to its needs, um, which is very similar to our own uh, long haul microwave um, relay systems. Okay. So what you have, you have obviously you have three different types. So the the type threes are the underlying data data network. You then have the type twos, which are the uh, data relays. They're like a dynamic system that they they will fly around and they will basically uplink to the type threes in the buildings and then up to the type ones, which are up in the higher atmosphere. And then what will happen is there's a actually a limitation of distance between the type threes and the type twos. Okay. So what they'll do is they'll start daisy chaining along uh, up and up into the sky or over over high areas of higher eleva- elevation. Okay. And, uh, stuff like that. And then what happens is, is that when the uh, you have these type three, the sorry, the type ones, they will then form these triangles, uh, and they then basically surround and, and target other UFOs, other UAPs. Um, based on like, data, based on the data they're getting from the type one or from the type twos and type threes, right? So they're getting data, they're correlating. So the type twos, threes are going, hey, there's a there's a UFO here. Here's the data. This is the information where it's at. And if and if those need to get higher up for the type ones to hear it. To, to get the data, they'll they'll get up, they'll go in the air, they'll go, hey, the data link, the relay goes up. Type ones are up in the upper upper atmosphere, right? We're talking mm-hmm. like outside of orbit, right? Probably. Yeah. Okay, so those get those get the message, hey, here's something, let's do it. The big ones come in, make a triangular formation around the craft that they got to do, and then that's when the magic happens. Like so. So what it what it allows is is that this this relay system allows um, a, a stealthy data link. So from from the above, from like a hundred thousand feet, when it looks down on the ground, they can't detect the network because it all blends in with background radiation. Okay. It also uses burst relaying, so it only works when it when it needs to and, and shuts down when it's not. So what it allows is, is that when an object comes in, it can then triangulate and literally wrap around it like this. So right. you're talking basically a, a hypersonic um, three hundred sixty degree intercept system um, that's been here pretty much forever. So. This is this is uh, what it is. Um, let me just uh, stop the share and I'll get back to this. So that's that's pretty amazing because, like you said, if you look back forty years, you'll see it in photos, right? You'll see the, yeah. you'll see this, yeah. you'll see these orbs surrounding craft in a yeah. number of photos, right? They use the same process they did then as they do now. Um, it's just now we're we're seeing seeing it more. 
Right. Um, because there's more people so, picking phones at this guy and cameras and exactly, whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. And now I'll show you this. This is a. Um, this is a uh, some links I have. So I just describe which one, which one's which. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you like some of these things are like, uh, like Patrick. How big are these things, man? Are they like the size of my fist? Like the smallest ones? Are they like uh, that big? Yeah, the Type threes are literally the size of a baseball, sometimes a bit smaller. Okay. Um, the Type twos are about the size of say of a bowling ball. Okay. Maybe a little bit bigger, but the okay. Type ones are much bigger. They're about the size of a beach ball, maybe a little bit bigger, give or take. Okay. Uh, okay. But that's the general size differences. All um, right. Let me show you this. Uh, so this was filmed um, by I think Ghost Adventures or one of them. Okay. And they're in a building, and the, as I said, the Type Threes they operate in buildings, and what they can do, they can quant a thing called quantum tunnel through walls, which is what exactly what we saw during World War Two because they used to come through the planes or through the wings and stuff like that. Um, and in here, they, they you can actually see it on lidar. Here it comes. Right. There you go. There he is. Oh, that black? It was black, right? Okay. So that's one example. I'll give you others. Okay. So it's a. Uh, so some people are having these hauntings. People think their house is haunted and the and the and the stuff's going on. Yeah. It's this relay it's system. One of these. Okay. That's right. Wow. And that's why uh new houses with no history become active. Well, old houses that have loads of lows are not. Because it and also it moves around to its needs. So it'll it'll move where it needs to, wherever it, wherever the network needs it. Um but here's another example, like uh, this is these are completely four separate images. The top uh, top right, I think, is Skinwalker. The bottom one, the, sorry, the bottom left, the green one is um, that's taken in a field in England. Okay. The one bottom right is one in Thirty East Drive, where the Poltergeist is. Uh, and then you got the one at the top, which is like historic drawings of these things. Oh, these balls floating around. Wow. So they're all the same thing. They're all the same type threes throughout history, all all around the world. Wow. So they look like so they look like a silver ball in yeah. broad daylight. And in nighttime when they or when they boot up or whatever, they have like a yeah. glow, right? Yeah. So what it's doing is um energizing the air around it, which is producing photons. Oh, so that's light. So it's creating yeah. the light around it. Okay. With photons. Right. Wow. Okay. So uh, this wild. is this is a good view of one here. Daddy. Oh my god, it's right. Daddy, I'm scared. Is that a big ball in the middle of the road? Not kidding. I yes. That's kind of uh weird. Oh daddy, I'm not but lying to you. I'm not kidding. I just disappeared. Oh my yeah. Thank God. Okay. So it's like, but actually, in remote areas, they're not, they're not as they're not as worried about being seen. So they they just seem to just do what they want to do. Um, it's just in populated areas they generally try, try and hide and, and keep out of, out of uh, vision. Um, it is. It's from. Is it? Are they, one of the questions I had? You know, I think you and I talked about it last time. But one that keeps coming back to me was, why do they give a shit um, if humans are seeing them? You know, I mean, like, what, what does it matter to them? <laughs> like, is I mean, there's got to be part of it for self-preservation, or is it, or are they more worried about whatever they're trying to take out seeing them than than humans? You know what I mean? Like, so that like whatever is piloting the craft or whatever is piloting the craft they're taking out, they're more. Are they more worried about those people seeing them or humans, or, or is it both um, the same? I would say it's about the same because I mean, they use the buildings to, to absorb the electronic emissions. So okay. they, that's why they use the buildings um, in in populated areas. But obviously, in areas that are remote with no population, they seem they seem to be quite happy outside. Um, that's weird. So they're not really they're not really concerned. I mean, they, they don't have a place to hide, so their their missions are probably getting spotted right at that point. If they're in the middle of a field, yeah. there's nothing to hide. There's nothing to to shield them. So it seems weird that they'd be out and about unless they needed to be. Right. Here's another example here. 
It's actually insane. It is nuts. Right. Wait, what's that? What? There's like a ball of light right here. There is. What? And you'll notice it always lights up the ground. Yeah. They all kind of look like the same color, believe it or not. It's kind of hard from the... Um, oh my god, dude. What the fuck? There's nothing on my thermal. It's just the IR. There's a ball of light. It's only on IR. It's only on IR. Why would there be a night vision light? I don't get it. I mean, look at that. Hmm. Hello? Yeah, I don't see anything. Once I go into IR, though... There's a light. This makes no sense. Let's go over there. Yeah. It probably Hello? just disappears again, right? Let's go go on. What? It yep, it go on. What the fuck? <laughs> no way. So is it actually leaving the area or is it just like visually disappearing? You know, that's No, it, it just whizzes away. It yeah. just takes off. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Wild man. So it, it's it's interesting. It's like why uh this, this, this is a good one. Um so this was sent to me from, um, I think, from Thailand, actually. Um, and uh, this this uh, girl, look, you see it coming in the background here? And it yeah. just flies by. Wow. In a couple frames, like boom, boom, boom. It's probably taking real just fast. Just a couple of frames, yeah. Yeah. And that, like you said, it looks like the size of a, I don't know, maybe a beach ball, maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me see this. Huh. Here's another example. Mexico. Oh yeah. So in areas of high elevation, they would have to they have to work around it because they're using a microwave signal. So they they would have like one at the say the bottom and one at the top of the mountain and so forth. They would just map the signal around. And that's why they kind of stay in the same area or the same kind of, you know. When they sit there, they sort of sit in the same point in space. Mm -hmm. um, because they got to keep the data link connected, right? That's right. Yeah. Wow. And then it just disappears. Interesting. And, um, so this is a site two. No. That, is it smaller? So type twos are the larger ones. So okay. that, these are the ones that link down. So type threes. Got it. Okay. So Three, yeah, threes I mean, are the I mean, tiny ones. Three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So people will just see, see these things. Well, you, uh, people see these things uh, just flying around, and this is a uh, what they saw in Iraq. The oh right, yeah, the the one that they actually released from Arrow, right? The video of Arrow that yeah that that orb that came through. And that's one of these. And as you can see, it's over high elevation areas. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's there's clouds on top of that mountain right there. So, yeah. And they're not slow. And then this one here. No, no, no. No, they, they're very, very nimble. So this here is then the uh, V formations. Okay. So you have the, the type threes in the building low down to the ground. They link up to the type twos, and then they uh, create the type one deformation, which is what everyone's seeing here. So this is what it is. So these are type ones, and in the dis yeah, in the in the distance you can see the type two. Um, yeah, the type one, the type ones are the ones that cause uh, the triangle. These are the these are much larger, and these are the ones that do the damage, right? These are the these are the guys I'll take you out. You see it? Oh, yeah. The fourth one's over there. There's oh, another that, one. It just got dark. You can see it's black still. In the yeah. Middle. Yeah. No, that's this one. You know, yeah. that's a big wow. One. It is black. What the hell? Here's yeah, another cool. example. That's the same one. This one, okay, this is really good. This is my um, the video I put together to um, to show it all. Oh yeah, so you got the V formation there. Type type one, type two. Mm -hmm. 
so the target is above the canopy or whatever. It's it's way above. We can't see it, right? Mm -hmm. It moves as a single concise triangle. Yeah, so it does. It, it looks like it, it looks like it's connected by it, like something to yeah. connect it all, right? So here it's in vertical configuration, which means the triangle's up on its side. And there's a, a, another one over there. You see it? So we have one. Ah, okay. So that's the one that's relaying four. the information. Then we have two that split apart, one there and one there. But I'm, I'm keeping my... This is an amazing game. I've never seen anything orange like that in my life. Orange? Jets don't fly like that either. No, and jets they, don't fly like jets that. Don't fly and they have colors on each wing, uh, green and blue. That's just pure orange. No, green and red. That, 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 I'm talking about that's, that's pure that's orange. orange. Yeah. That's pure orange. Listen to you watch it. I will, but Jesus Christ, what is that? that is I know. So the one in the middle is a type two, probably, right? That's. Mm -hmm. This is a good one. This is over at the um, Arizona mountains. Okay. You see the, the formation. Uh, oh the yeah. Of, on the side. Yeah, yeah. And then see the two following it behind. Wow. They're moving. So they they get into that V formation when they're going to attack something, right? Or is it just trains? I mean, is that the only time they're in that in that configuration? Um, well, they, they're in that configuration when they're tracking something. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought it was attacking. Yeah. I thought they were, they were they were in a triangle when they were trying to shoot something down. Same deal. Tracking and attacking, right? Yeah. Yeah. Same thing. Wow. You know, if you weren't paying attention, it would just be like something in the background, like a bug, right? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, what? what is yeah. that? There's a bird sitting up there looking at it. <laughs> yeah that's uh and there's another type two as well so as i said daisy chains along depending on how far the distance it is from the type threes it's just so a daisy it, chain along boom 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 so it's still re and that's still relaying something probably to a three down down even lower right at some point that's right hmm. wow oops it's all right it's just jumping around a little bit a little laggy it's okay. It's good for the. Actually helps. Whoa! Look at those guys. Yeah, what that, in the that's fuck? a. Oh my god! Those are real bright. Yeah, that's a. Uh, Holy shit, dude! Oh my god! So what they're doing is they're jumping between vertical configuration and horizontal. Oh my god! Whoa! Because they're trying to like correlate or get a lock on something, right? As it's going over, they will move positions. And yeah, see this one here, it changes. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll, we'll flip it and we'll flip. There you go. Right. So it's still it's still keeping the same distance apart from each other. It's keeping that triangle still. Oh, there's four. Yeah. That's it. Oh, there's more than that. There. Yeah. Wow. And this is how it generally works. So it's just... Uh, you can actually tell which one's which just by the flight behavior. Yeah. Hmm. Shit. And these things, they emit, besides radiation, they emit a frequency also, right? Some type of um, well, they, I think they all sorts of things. Um, but uh, as far as I, I can tell, it's uh, gamma radiation and microwaves. Gamma, gamma and microwave. Okay. Wow. So if you it's, were looking, pretty if amazing. You... I mean, this is this is a uh, and this is this can be this can shoot around, shoot, shoot around like uh, hypersonic speeds. So it's it it really is amazing thing to watch. And that's why they look like they just completely disappear, right? Because if it was just like the ones we were looking at, they were on the ground and people were filming them, they, they were ghosts. It was just like there and then gone, right? It was just, yeah, they just take off. Wow. But as you can see, the same patterns keep replicating every time. 
Yeah. The same process keep replicating. It's, just, it's the same thing. Vertical, uh, horizontal tracking. It's got one that's following it. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that it's a repeatable visual process from all over the world, right? Yet Arizona, Mexico, yeah. England. All over the world. <laughs> They're all doing the same thing. They all look the same. So, um, well, it's the same behavior patterns, same processes. It's, right. it's the same AI um, all around the world. Um, and it actually works out that the spheres themselves are controlled from the ground up. Oh. So whoever whoever controls them lives here. Oh, okay. So that was my question. That was going to be my question about the type threes. I'm like, why do they have to be so close to the ground? I mean, if everything's they're messing with is up, it would make sense that their main control right so their base would be ground ground level well or, they are they're like um satellites but in reverse so uh we like we we live here but we have satellites in space to relay right. signals around the earth but if you're if you're trying to prevent stuff from coming in from space you can't put your your data links there you've got to put them at the lowest point which is the safest point Right, because so if you put them up higher, they're just going to get attacked right away from the top. Right, yeah, that's right. That's a, that's a weak point. Yeah, these are orange. Yeah, they actually changed color. They seem to go from red to orange to green. So um, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe some sort of traffic lights or something. <laughs> I don't know, but that's something I'm working on. <laughs> yeah, those kind of remind me of the ones that I I've, I've seen the orange orbs there. Interesting. Where you can still see it barely. It's black. Yeah. It, it's not charged up. It's still there. It's like repositioning itself. And the thing is, you can always you can you can determine the 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 direction of the target from the position of the type two, because uh, the type two is always behind the type ones. So and the target would be here. Oh, okay. This is weak, the, the type two is is, is the uh, the weak point in the chain. If you take that out, then the data link is lost. And therefore, the the V formation won't work. So it needs that 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 one did there is, needs to keep out of the way. It needs to keep nice and low and um, behind the the main um, the main spheres. So that's the one that's kind of like the fulcrum, right? I mean, that's the one that's the base pointing at, directing yeah. the tr directing the uh, type ones to the target. That's right, and it, the it actually works out that you need one type two for every group of or cluster of three. So if you got like six of them or seven, there's generally we'll say six or um, you know twelve. There's generally you know uh, two or three uh, type twos talking to them. So in this case, so here, the, there's four here. So there's got to be another type two popping around probably somewhere, right? Maybe yeah. Or it's daisy chaining on the two. Oh, we just can't see it. It's going to be just black. Mm. Well, and these are the type three again. Um, literally above people's homes sometimes. Maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but you said gamma radiation and microwave. Mm. Do you think these things could be responsible for um, harming humans? Uh, yeah. Yeah, indirectly. Yeah, I mean that's why you had that's why um, they produce bodyguard activity because it's all to do with the inverse square law of radiation. You you want to keep people away from you when you're broadcasting, um, but we can get into that in a minute actually because um, there's some actual good data on that. Yeah, yeah. So this, well, I know I know this, this guy. This guy's in Vegas. This, yeah, yeah. So this is where it gets good. So let me just uh, get my screen ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I knew I was jumping the gun, but. You know, my brain's going a mile yes. thinking about, you know, if you're standing next to this thing and it's blasting out gamma radiation in a microwave and you're not getting away, it's probably going to mess your brain up a little bit. <laughs> well, yeah. So this, this is, um, let me share my screen. So this is study East Drive. Um, this is where um, the UK's this most aggressive polygast lives. And that's, that's the place I, I first went to try and figure this stuff out. Okay, right. This is like the most haunted house in England, right? 
Some well, some would argue Europe and some would argue the world. I mean, uh, wow. it's, it's only a small place, um, but the police won't go in there. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, the, it, it's just, you, you can't stay in there longer than a few days. It's It uh, just does your head in. Um, but uh, if you look at it, you, if you look at the building here, you'll notice you've got this side bit here. Mm -hmm. yeah? yeah. So you want to keep that in mind because what I found when I was doing my testing in there is that Poly ice activity was computer like. So, what it's doing is keeps repeating the same patterns and processes again and again. And one of those patterns is this one here. I've got to show you this. This is brilliant. Yeah. One of the questions that somebody asked was Are you going to take a thermal camera there to 30, that that house? Uh, yeah. I, I can go into that in a minute. Um, right on. So, you see this? Yeah. Now I can yeah. see it. Yep. So, this is the coal shed door, right? This is. Um, in that part of the building that's separate. Okay, that little lower part. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what happens. Yeah. So this this is um one of the actions the sphere does to move you away from the area. It's making that bang, 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 like somebody's banging on yeah. something real hard. Okay. And that is and that is um happening repetitively. That is happening down here. So we are we are up here, and it moves you down here. So this is what's happening. Is is it? Oh, let me get to that in a minute. But what is what it's doing is is it's banging the door to say, right, you go down there because it's safe down there. And oh. uh, that's that's how it rolls. And then once it's actually done, um, all of the uh, it just switches off, and that's it for three or four days. Really? So nothing will happen for three or four days. It'll bang like that. It'll get you away That's right. from it. That's right. So this is what's moving around the house. Is this is let me can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this was what's moving around the house. And this was taken on the stairway. And this is a you see like a black mass moving around. Yeah. Looks like a black and, like a uh, misty shadow looking thing. Yeah. Yeah. But it moves digitally. Like like uh, with zero um, zero resistance or weights, it just moves around real quick in a digital way. Hmm. Um, and in fact, if you have a look at this picture here, which is on it as well, if you look closely, you can see what looks to be a small sphere in the middle. Right. Okay. There. Yeah. Um, I can yeah. When you marked it, I can see that. Oh, and then someone else got these images, and I I checked these out, and what you see is a small silver sphere flying around the room. Mm -hmm. So this is the type threes. So why the hell do they? Why are they messing with people? I mean, like, why? Why are they? You know what I mean? Like, they're in the house and eh, they're they're getting you away from it, but uh, that you know, you can't live well, with it. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, um, it's like any network. It's like a own cellular network. A network. It will have to go, it goes where it has to go, mm -hmm. not really where it wants to go. So that's why. Um, you know, that it, it, it puts itself in buildings sometimes. Um, so this is a, here's an example from 1903 where people see these things coming through the wall, which is exactly what you saw on the LIDAR. Right. Um, wow. That's uh, obviously you've seen that example already. Right. And then you have to say, well, why why are these small drones in these buildings? Why, um, why are these spheres in the buildings and why are they causing physical actions? Yeah. And are people getting physically affected? Right. So... Being an IC guy, you know that drones, doesn't matter how advanced they are, they need to send and receive signals, yep. right? Yep. Uh, number two, it needs a network. Mm -hmm. And then number three, it needs AI. So the question is, is there any repetitive action, actions or effects occurring, which is the door banging? Right. And that's just, that's just one of many that's going on in the building. And these this this pattern's been going on for, for the last 30 years. Okay. So it's not like it's not like something that comes and goes. It's, it's a constant pattern. Um, so what it appears to be is 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 that these uh, spheres are programmed with all the same precoded actions to say right do this to get people away because if you if you um, um, study portuguese activity all around the world you'll notice it all has the same behavior patterns it all makes noises bang doors it throws stones and it even causes fires um, so it's it's um, it's all the same patterns. All the same AI, the same group, of, same library of actions. Um, like opening doors and slamming doors, and, and that's right. Yeah. Making do like what about the the incarnate voices and shit like that that people hear? Like you know the 
get out. <laughs> that's that's oh, coming yeah. from the spear, right? That's yeah. I mean, it's it's basically doing um, it basically uh, like copies your voice and plays it back to you. Whoa! Um, and then it broadcasts it as like the electromagnetic wave, which then I think it gets um, it is it when you when you have a rec- recorder going, it comes across as electronic crosstalk. So you you hear it on the circuit, but not through the microphone. Right. Then, oh yeah. That when you when you do that uh, EVP, right, or the electronic voice phenomenon, right. right. So it comes through because it's an electromagnetic wave and not an actual audio. That's audio. right. It's, yeah. it's not hitting the audio thing. Huh. So the the question is: Has there been any digital signals being detected from these buildings? Right. And the answer is yes. Um, so I'll show you this one. Wow. I mean that banging thing. You think? That's that's trying to tell you to get the hell away from wherever it's banging, right? Or is it it's banging to get you to come to to look at the banging? You know, because I I'd just run the other way. <laughs> oh, no, no, have a look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, come come look. I'd be like, nah, it's cool. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna look. Yeah. So and actually, other people have detected as well. And again, that picked up as as a electronic cross talk. Um, picked up by on your camera, on your um, recorders, stuff like that. But it always sounds the same. And I think anyone who's got any sort of uh, technical knowledge will realize that these are digital signals. Yeah. This always goes on for about two minutes. But if you keep listening to it, you'll notice that it almost sounds like a dial up modem. Yeah, that's uh you couldn't can you hear that with your you can't hear that with your ears though, right? It almost sounds like there's voice in there somewhere. That's me like that. Because I'm talking this is just uh being picked up on the recorders. Uh it's a quite left on the cross talk. But I can't hear it. I'm not aware of it. Wow. Are you trying to say <laughs> that uh it's very consistent yeah but the ending is brilliant that's, well, that's why i'm losing this play because once you hear the ending you're it's obvious So it's clearly a digital signal. Wow. So what would you pick that up on? What device was that? You can pick it up on um, just ordinary audio tape if, if you're close enough to it. Or it, it's, as I say, it's picked up as electronic crosstalk. Um, wow. I think in this case it was picked up on a, a microphone, which is again which is electronic cross talk wow uh, so even digital it doesn't matter digital tape it doesn't matter it'll pick yeah up. yeah as long as, but yeah as long as um it, because it bypasses the actual microphone just gets it goes straight onto the uh, circuit jeez so let me show you something else did you stick that through a um uh spectrograph Yes, I did actually. <laughs> um, we we figured out that it, it appears to be an eighteen bit code. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, but obviously, I can only do so much with my my sort of research, my budget. Um, but it appears to be an eighteen bit code that is uh, obviously from the sphere, which is burst relaying. So the, the sphere itself is acting like a transponder. So it shuts yeah. it it, it uh, turns on when it needs to, and it shuts down again. And then by the time it's when it's on. It's causing diversions around the house to say keep away from me while I'm transmitting or relaying. 
Uh, um, so it's doing all at the same time. It's not going to somewhere yeah, and relaying. It's, yeah. it's relaying and it's also getting people yeah. to get away from so it. The question is like, you know, how do you, how do, how do I figure out what kind of signal it was producing? Right. Yeah. So you have to find the network. So I'll show you this. This is pretty cool. It's just like, uh, wild man so you see this yes so if you map all the badly very uh, active locations around the uk um because if you, if you think about it this way if it's a a drone which is sending and receiving signals right that means uh, there's obviously data link links going through the country mm -hmm. right? so you have to all you do is you filter these locations by the level of activity that's occurring in them so if, if something's happening like once in a blue moon, then you know it's, it's just ignore that, filter that out. Got you want to look. At, you want to look at the pathways that are uh, always um, always uh, active. And if you do that so that the um, the map, these locations pop up. That's now what you'll find is if you look at it, the um, if you look at the locations, they have similar point to point distances, which. Oh indicates a low to ground network is an operation which is technically similar to our own network topology of a microwave based point-to-point -point relay system wow microwave because it travels in straight lines it's like 50 miles or something in america i think for microwave I'm, i could be wrong but it's something like that and so this works around around topology as well so if you map it you'll find that these places that each each one of these places is actually over a hill <laughs> but it works around it so it goes around the hill. That's, that's interesting. Right. Or over it, yeah. Or over, yeah. So what happens is, is, is that these um, what appears to happen is when something is coming into our atmosphere, a type one sphere or one of the clusters will detect something passively. It will then signal down to the type threes in the buildings, who will then relay the signal along to whoever controls it, probably mm -hmm. underground somewhere, and then it relays it up to the others clusters, and then together they can all close in like this whoa and because it's going through this this system and it's all microwave base it means that it's undetectable we yeah, well you should be able to detect microwaves though right well, you can but i mean to to targets oh, oh okay okay yeah so because the emissions are not going near the target so they've been redirected downwards got it so the target itself is is not getting is not receiving any of that static it's not getting any of the any right. of the uh okay whoa yeah. so yeah if you look at this this is the layout of the house okay so um from what i can tell from the electronic emissions in the building mm -hmm. the sphere itself is operating in the attic which is up here uh on, on the first floor it's in the attic here and it seems to go back and forth around here and it's always generally in the same area uh now when we were doing well when i was doing the tests we were in here uh and that's when it banged the coal shed door which is down here now okay. if you look at the layout you can see that that's the most shielded, most distant part of the building. It is, yeah. So what's happening is it's, it's doing a, its transmission, and it's the radiation is going through one, two, three walls, maybe three and a half mm -hmm. walls. So it's saying, everyone, go down there, and that's where you'll be safe. Wild. Why the hell is it in the building? Why has it got to be there? <laughs> she wasn't just going <laughs> outside. You know what I mean? It's like... Like I'm just trying to have breakfast, buddy. Like, uh, why? Yeah, why, yeah. why they got to yeah. blow radiation off in my face? Huh? And that's what it is. And that's what it is. And, and so the once the door bangs, like I just showed you, yeah, the transmissions are done, and then it all goes quiet again. But obviously, being human, we go, "Oh, that's evil spirits," or you know, a dead person from thirty years ago, or, or something. It's, it's, um, it's not. It's, it's this. Um, wow. So let me just show you something else. I know this is dumb, but it just came to my mind, and I, I don't know. It's an, I think it's. Does anybody try to catch one of these? Fuck, like grab it, like uh, Scooby Doo, net it up. Okay. You know, let's. Well, catch I might, it. I might pick it up. <laughs> What's that? I might, I might, I might, might be doing that. Oh, uh, so <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> Here's a, here's a really good um, bit of data for you. So um, this is from Dr. Is it Jim uh, Sigala? I can never pronounce his name. Uh, um, he's getting a ranch guy, right? Maybe he's out there. 
he put uh, sensors in these buildings that were people were saying they were having paranormal effects. Okay. What did he pick up? Exactly as I models, which is gamma radiation and microwaves. Whoa. At the same exact frequency almost. Exactly. Yeah. So the gamma radiation is down here. Yeah. Microwaves up here. Whoa. So the stuff that's happening in England here is replicating in America and all over the world. And it's the same process, same technology, same everything. Shit. And we can figure it out now. So here's a good one for you. Let me show you this. So in these um, buildings, the, the paranormal investigators, when they go in there, they all start complaining or feeling tired, uh, headaches, dizziness, fainting. Uh, they feel weakness, mm -hmm. uh, even cognitive impairment. Right. It's all the same issues you get from low-dose gamma radiation effects. Oh, yeah. Wild. Yeah, that does make sense. All right. Same exact same. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same. It's the same. Um, yeah. Yeah. So this is why people I think are a bit crazy in these buildings, because if you keep exposure to these to these uh these uh, emissions, it will have a neurological effect and you will end up doing something really crazy. Well, yeah, like microwaves. I mean, they're saying the Havana syndrome might could possibly microwave could be a pot possible explanation for that, right? Yeah, yeah. So this in fact, the neighbor of 30 East Drive next door, she gets constant headaches. Wow. Constant headaches because the microwaves are going through the wall. And it's like I said to her, well, do you uh, do you get headaches when you leave the place? Oh, no, they will disappear. Mm, <laughs> That's I, what it is. You got to put a for sale sign up, lady. <laughs> wow. It's like, uh, but they don't, they don't have any activity in, inside the uh, neighbor's house, right? It's just all centered around that one house. So what, what's really going on is is that these, um, as I said, the type threes are these sort of small baseball size spheres. Yeah. They create a dynamic network that moves around the country. Um, it moves around to its knees, and then it, it moves around to its knees, and then it uses the building itself to um, absorb the electronic signatures and master gamma ra radiation as well. They use AI and pre-coded actions to move people away when needed, and this has been misinterpreted as evil spirits and ghosts over history. Um, it actually depends on the type of building they're using as well. If they use like a modern building, uh, like a brick building, yeah. they generally are in the attic. But if you go into like a, a like a wooden building, like a single floor wooden building, like a, we call them bungalows over here. I think in America you call them something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. But they actually operate in the basement. So they so, so they need to be surrounded by um, whatever the the construction of the building is is either helpful or hurtful to their transmissions, right? That's right. Yeah, that's hmm. right. Interesting. But yeah. So let me show you some more stuff. Now I've got so, so much to show you. <laughs> oh, I bet, so, man. I, I, that's, that's just wild. Yeah. So this, I'll show you this. Just thinking about all the Skinwalker Ranch, they had the same type of experience, you know, when oh, they. It's uh, the same thing. Uh, in fact, so the Sears deploy from Skinwalker. Um, it's one of the deployment areas. Um, Probably why I haven't been why I haven't been asked to go onto it. <laughs> What's that now? Is it because uh, there's something under Skinwalker? Probably. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, I, I think I think um, Skinwalker is quite easy to figure out, uh, especially when you think of it in a sphere sense of, of things. Um, but um, I don't know; they might, might want me on one day. They might not. I don't know, um, but we'll see. So, let me show you this. I don't know if you can see that, but there's something orbiting that planet over there. I don't know if you can so here, see that. You can see oh, yeah. spheres come down. Okay. I see the one. There's something orbiting that planet. There's another one coming as well. You look at that. I see it before see it, it? Uh, cuts. There it is up there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Right there. at the top right. Yep. Not sure what's going on here. That's weird. A 10-inch light bridge made by Mead. I'm going to be filming that planet just right there. Okay. Now check this out. I've never seen this before, and I'm actually surprised my phone's doing this. But uh, check this out. Oh my God! It blew up. What the hell? Something just blew the hell up. So it was orbiting. 
and now it blew up and it's in outer space and it's no longer there. It's fucking wild. Yeah. Holy shit, man. Now what do you notice? Triangle formation. There you go. And in but this this uh this is uh horizontal configuration, which means the target's below or above. So what's yeah. happening is obviously they're blowing these things up and they're turning into like a molten metal as it, as it's coming down. That is then landing in our oceans. Mm -hmm. So what do you think we're doing about it? Um oh <laughs> scooping it up. <laughs> <laughs> why we're finding what is stuff at the bottom of the oceans wow that makes sense that makes in sense. fact they're now they're now going out and heavily mining this stuff yeah yeah the, the um other nodules is that kind of part of it too one of those i've heard of those nodules in the on the bottom of the ocean floor i can't remember what they're called but they have like a ridiculous amount of precious metals in them that's right that's right and this is this is where it's coming from um so, so they're blowing them up over the oceans. They're not doing it over land. Because if we did, you'd see shit all over the place, probably, right? That's correct, yeah. Um, it appears to be that when it's up really high, um, they, they destroy them. When they're down low, they disable them. And then oh. they extract them out with the tic, uh, the tic tac that comes in and grabs it and then and extracts out. So the logic behind that is this. is if If something can get through your network down to the ground level, you yeah. want to know how it works, right? So you would you would disable it, and then you would take it for analysis to see how they got through the network, and then you have to update the network. So uh -huh. the, the thing is, when people say that this is like an ancient system that has been sort of left here years ago, is is actually wrong. It's actually fully up to date and, and adaptive, and and still being deployed and, and and advanced. Because it's learning from its mistakes. It's learning from the whatever it's encountering re-engineering uh, yeah. its yeah. processes. Yeah, well, the people who control it are. Right, right. Yeah. So so I you don't think this is a sentient no. uh, um, uh, process that is just somebody put it put it in here like we put, you know, centuries, well, you know, the, uh, I can't remember the name of the system that shoots down missiles over Gaza, you know, the thing that just shoots oh, a billion yeah. you know that's automatic you know and it, it sees a missile coming in it's not that you think that some, these are either being actively controlled or active you know ai is powering them but somebody somebody's creating them and somebody's launching them and, and behind it yeah. all yeah i mean it, it is i mean it is predominantly ai controlled right but it is still managed by some, some, you know, somebody somebody or something right yeah you think it's humans no <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah humans, humans wouldn't figure that shit out maybe well, this, this stuff i'll tell you what um it, there's a way of measuring this through history okay now if the type three spheres as i describe are, are responsible for poltergeist activity right yeah all you have to do is is google when was the first time poltergeist activity was recorded and it goes back to the first century Got it. So, yeah. So it's been here. The same system has been here for that long. Right, right. So now I've got some interesting videos to show you. Um, let me just uh, have to put this on pause for a sec. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. I, um, I'm just worried, you know, wondering about catching them. It's like uh, Pokemon. You got to catch them. <laughs> well, no, they, they malfunction, you know. Oh yeah, I mean that's yeah. There's there's got to be a collection agency for that too, right? They got to be able to come pick up their um... who would who would make a company like that? Mm -hmm. But we'll, there's some news coming out about that anyway. So. <laughs> who would make a company to pick that shit up? I don't. Maybe it's an aerospace company. Maybe maybe, somebody, maybe it was somebody that would be. Um, uh, good at that kind of logistics. So let me grab this. So this is um. So this is a uh, video taken from inside the East Drive. Um, okay. I'm going to show you how how these things do podcast activity. So where is most? Sure. So they'll show up on IR, but not thermal, right? I mean, is that? Yeah, it's all IR, mostly IR. Our thermal cameras are expensive, um, mm -hmm. but, but this that, one's but... done. By, uh, 
but it, it appears actually you can see them in IR better than you can in thermal. Um, okay. But this is a, a good example of something. Actually. I wonder if one of those full spectrum cameras that actually see full spectrum light. That yeah, it is. Okay. So is it, this is IR. This is this is IR. Yeah, passive okay. IR. And what you'll see is this. This is a like um, a pram, nothing in it. Um, mm -hmm. And what what it was doing is it is that the AI thinks that there's something in a baby in the pram. Okay. But what it's going to do is move away, push this thing away from the emissions, which is what's going to happen now. There it goes. Whoa. So this, this, if you look closely, you can see it come through the wall. See it? Uh, on the left-hand side? Okay. Yeah, it kind of looks like a white, it's real small. White, white blob, yeah. That's, yeah. that's the, that's the, um, that's how small they are. And, and it's, all they're doing is it, it, doing that, see? Whoa. So it, it it can physically interact with the environment. Oh yeah, it can go through a, a wall and then knock over an object. Wow! So it's kind of like it it really is is bonkers. I mean, it's like um, I mean we call it uh, quantum tunneling, but right. it looks like they've mastered it. it. It's amazing to watch, and I've seen this happen in front of me. I mean, I, I was here when all this happened. In fact, this happened three times in one night. Same thing. Yeah, same thing because it's the same process. Same if you set up like this, the same thing will happen time and time again. Right, but if you put a basketball there or like uh, a garbage can, it wouldn't kick that. Right? It wouldn't do anything, no. Because <laughs> so it thinks there's a baby in there and That's it's right. getting it out of the way. That's right. And it's not throwing it. Is that going into a different room? Is it like is that like a doorway to a different room there off to the? No, right? no, that that goes down the stairs. Oh Jesus, that's not yeah. good. No. <laughs> But, but it's not like it throws it hard down the stairs. It just nudges it just so it hits a couple of couple of steps. Wow. And it does it every time. Every time. It's repeatable. That's amazing. I actually did contact this. Uh, in, there was this, I forgot who they were called, but there was a, like a debunking group or something. You said yeah. oh, you liked 100,000 pounds if you could prove poltergeist activity or something. Yeah. So I said, all right, I'll do it. So yeah. I contacted them. And they said, oh, you, it's only applicable if, if you've got magic powers to do it. What? Yeah, I said, well, I've got magic powers, but I know how to do it. <laughs> wow. So, uh, yeah, they... They they they, uh, they didn't want to pay up. They didn't want to pay up, no. <laughs> well, so if you sat there, if, a, if another, you know, an adult or whatever, would it, the same thing happen? Yeah, you get pushed, yeah. yeah. Jesus. Every time. Um, Amazing. So I'll show you something else. Well, it is kind of creepy, though. Well, it is when you when you don't know what it is. It is creepy as it is because I mean this stuff happens all night long. Yeah. Um, but if you know what it is, it's not too bad. But straight after this event, what, again, you, because you're getting hit by the emissions, you feel messed up. You yeah, your like brain. You yeah. yeah, you feel uh, like um, like you have sunburn on the inside. You you feel a bit, you know, and oh. it's because the emissions are hitting you. And it's trying to tell you to go away. Wow. And you're ignoring it, you know, and you've got to remember, like, we've only got brave for the last 50, 60 years. Before this, people would run a mile, you know, witchcraft and all that stuff. They Burn would, that house to the yeah. ground. Yeah. They would have hoardy priests out there. That whole thing would be. Yeah. 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 yeah so we've only got brave recently. And mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why a lot of, we're now getting hit by emissions and stuff because we are sticking around. So um, I. I mean, is there a way, I know it's stupid. I just had an idea, but like, you know, you put yourself in, uh, in, you know, some type of a suit to block emissions, you know, some type there of, are, the, yeah, there is actually, there's theories about this. Um, kind of like that's, a, that's uh, something I'm working on as well. Like a, uh, yeah, there are, there are, there's potentially there are ways to, to shield you from it. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you, so if you're stuck in one of these buildings, you could, you could um, reduce it at least because all the what it's doing is giving you scarecrow like warnings because you're in range. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you're not in range, it doesn't care. But then it will hurt you. I would suppose. I mean, if if you went up there and you're like, I'm not moving, 
you're going to stand there and that pushing you and you're like, yeah, forget it. You did, mm. you'd eventually have some type of medical issue because you're getting exposed to radi uh, radiation and microwave yes. radiation, right? And you would get sick. You would get hurt. Yeah. In fact, um, from what I hear, it's, it, people get Parkinson's disease. Oh, well, that's not good. So you get holes in your brain or something going on with neurologically, right? Yeah. Um, but not now I've got, I've got some other good stuff to show you. So because the, the type three spheres are basically AI machines, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I came up with a binary that you play through it to get it to interact. Well, so how the, how the hell did you come up with that? Oh yeah. So I'll show you that in a sec. Hold on. Do you, you know what if you, what, you know how that it mimics you and plays back your voice to it? I mean, you just play back its own thing to it. No, well, can't, uh, no, 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 no. Mm. Uh, I was right. say, you know, I do IT security. It'd be interesting to get a hold of that code that it's uh, whatever it's transmitting. If it's 18 bit, you know, see if we can break it and uh, figure out what that transmission is. You right. can. I mean, the, the thing is, is, is uh, it's all down to money and research. You know, it's all down to how much research budget you have. Um, yep. You could you could go to to work on this big time and, and figure this stuff out. I mean, if, but, we had, if you got the 18 bit and you had the code, we now have AI to use ourselves, right? I mean, we can we can set that wild onto you know to the LLM and just see if it can break it and and transcode it. It's worth a shot. Yeah, it's worth a go. Uh, here we go. Um, Probably saying that damn bit, that damn baby carriage is at the top of the steps again. <laughs> That's the code. It's just gonna be like shit. Move it. Yeah. Uh, let me just find this. Where's it gone? You know, I'm thinking too that, you know, uh, people always talk about dogs and cats, you know, cats, dogs, you know, uh, experiencing this stuff before humans do, you know, cat will look at something that's not there and freak you out. The dogs will go nuts. I mean, they're probably more susceptible. They have more receptors than we do as humans to pick up that radiation that. Um, yeah. 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 You're, you're right. Um, where is this going? That would be, uh, that would be one of the things why they flip, flip out before we do. They're a little bit more sensitive to that whole thing. Interesting. I'll put a dog up there. Dog, dogs don't like it. They run. They 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 get real panicky. Do they? Yeah, they just flip out and run away. Get get out of there. Here we yeah. are. Right. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of everywhere. No, it's all right, man. You got four thousand files. I get it. It's cool. Oh, let me just turn it down. So you've been doing it since two. I mean, the book came out in two thousand fifteen. But how many? How long were you doing it before you wrote the book? Oh, uh, well, I've been studying it all my life, really. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I didn't really get to work on it until 2014. 14, okay. 2015. Wow, it's like a good 10 years, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me show you this. Shit. Yeah, yeah. So this is um, 30 East Drive again. And um, I came up with this code and see just to see what happened, really. So... The, I, I, as I said before, this uh, the type the type threes they um, appear to make crop circles, and in one of the crop circles there was a, a code, uh, which a mathematician, a British mathematician, figured out. So I just copied the code and stuck in my own commands, and then put it into an app, and then I played it in Thirty Years Drive to see what happened. And uh, this is it. That high pitch noise is your code. Yeah, it's a binary code. Yeah. Filming, okay. So right here we have one, two, three, four. Or um, phones, my iPads playing it, and everything's in, in flight mode, so there's nothing broadcasting or transmitting. Then you have the sensors at the bottom. So you have EMF, you've got radiation, you've got microwave as well. And uh, this what happens. And what's that light bulb that's on the top up there then? Oh, that's one of my units I kind of uh, was working on. That's, that's uh, one of the strobes that I came up with. Okay, it's a strobe light, and it's strobe in the frequency that it's playing the audio audio frequency. Watch. Oh, there we go. That's radiation. Yep, radiation. Is that microwave energy picking up? Yeah, microwave and uh, magnetic field. Wow. So that's one example. So it it it's like it didn't like that or it's trying to answer. 
It's just it, engaging with it because it, it's something out of place. So it, it goes have a look at it. So what is picking up? When these things come close to it, it's just picking up the emissions from the objects. Ah, okay. So they're, they're, the objects are going, hey, what was that noise? What's what's that? What's going on? Come check yeah. it out. Okay. So here's another one. So this is just binary. You're just blasting, right? And it's audio. Yeah. You see this? Yeah. So this is again, you've got the same thing. You've got four phones playing it. And in the middle, we have the sensors, the EMF sensors. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, what's the balance? And how long are you doing? How long are you playing it for? Like 30 seconds or something? Yeah, a few seconds. Okay. And now the lights start flashing. Then they start engaging. That can't be vibration. It'd be going all the time. Look at that. Hiya. Oh, thank you. So the music is something you put in like as an after a thing, right? That's a... Yeah, yeah. Okay. You do that again. So with the lights are from motion? Like if something's turning on in the middle? The, the, the... So the, the these lights are in the middle. They're actually um, just cat balls. But basically when you sh when you put uh, mo motion against them, they'll fl flicker. Okay. Well, in this case, they're, they're, they're locked in place, so then they can't move. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But if but if you go up to hit it, like if you go up to smack it, it yeah. would it, it would do. Okay, that's right. But there's no one doing that. Okay, uh, wow. And also, then you got the the, the uh, magnetic field detectors at the back, which are also triggering as well. Right, so, right. So, uh, another yeah. example. Bunch uh, of stuff going on. So you can play this stuff, and it calls them in. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you get that creepy feeling uh, because it's not transmitting or, or wants to. I mean, I mean, I guess whatever it's doing, it's just doing. But you still get the same creepy, um, you know, get out of here type of vibe when, when you're doing No, that. actually, not not at that point, no. Okay. No. Um, it seems quite, quite pleasant, actually. Um, hmm. So it's not like, hey, get out of here. I'm going to try to transmit. It's more like just, <laughs> no. it's, it's more just like, okay, like a normal vibe. Okay. Yeah. But this is uh, another one. So... This is uh, one of the strobes I came up with. So um, I kind of figured that when you when you hear footsteps around uh, these buildings, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't see anything, well, what if they're using some sort of optical stealth? So I kind of figured a way to try and burn through that, so you can see 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 them. So ah, okay. So you're thinking that it's a a physical. There's something physically there, but we we visually can't see it. That's right. Yeah, that that as well. And um, how it works is the strobe is it's a it's a programmed strobe. So it's it's a custom built programmable strobe. And what it does is it it's always in a state of flux. So in order to do like uh, optical stealth, you have to have a a very uh, consistent pattern coming in and going out. So you you can adapt adapt to it. What this does it creates randomness. So it can't adapt fast enough. Therefore, you get a reflection. Ah, okay. So got it. So you're just making this completely random strobe and whatever the cloaking mechanism just can't keep up. That's right. Okay. So this is something I did. <laughs> it's one of my crazy experiments. So, so is this is this all in 30, the same building? No, 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 no. This, this is done next door to where I live. Okay. Yeah. And so you like um, printed what? that and everything? Yeah, so the story behind this, by the way, is um, I did this test in, in um, actually a graveyard next to the house. And after I'd done this, I started getting um, weird effect, uh, weird things happening around the house. Ooh. I liked, I'd be laying there at night because the house was had like wooden floors. Mm -hmm. At night, I hear people walking around like that. Oh, boy. And I, I thought it was like, you know, the kid running around. And it wasn't. There's was no one there. And I'm like, oh, I don't really appreciate this, you know. I, really like <laughs> um, I actually stopped doing it. So this, yeah. this was the time I done it. <laughs> so this is the last time you did it. Was this video of it here? In fact, another guy he bought one of these and he switched it on in his flat and he said he saw two men looking at him. Holy and shit! He actually ran out of his house and booked himself into a mental home. Oh my god! Yeah. So is this, he okay? This, is he all right? <laughs> I think he's all right now, but it, it does. It, it is. It is um, pretty, pretty much. Hello, everyone. This is um, 
Me so this is this is a this is like graveyard near your house. Next to it, yeah. The middle yeah. of the country. And this is like in the middle of the country, no one there. No one there. Right, right. right. Hell you don't even have any street lights or anything. No, no. Um, we're gonna turn it on, see what happens. So you got your strobe in the middle and you got a bunch of sensors probably around it, right? Yes, that's that's it. Okay. What's atomic light? It's a uh, light caused by electrical interaction. There you go. Look at that. So you're not doing anything. The, the unit's already got pre-programmed, but you're not touching it. You're just you just turned it on, and backed up, right? Okay. Is it you're like filming on an iPhone or something? Yeah. Okay. Mm. So you're physically, I mean, you're filming it, but you don't, you don't see anything with your eyes, right? I mean, you're not looking at it. I mean, you're not, you're not going freaking out or anything because you, you can't really see that with your own eyes. I'm guessing. It does look like there's something there to the right of it or behind it, right? That's it. It's gonna stop moving away. And how how big is that thing? Is it like as big as this this? Uh, it's this big, right? It's like as big as this cup. It's probably like yeah. an inch. But if you look there, now it's not inch, twelve inch. Okay, yeah, the red thing went off, right? Yeah, watch. Is, is this a replay? Yeah. Feet, okay. Twenty-five feet away from this. Do you see the thing that's standing there behind it? Yeah. Hey, I'm watching. Now watch what happens when I get close to it. It's going to start moving away. Right, there you go. Yep. And then the red thing turned off. So you walked. You were walking up towards the light. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see uh, this. This is like a uh, enhanced version in a minute. Yeah, there's something there, right? But it's got to be like two foot tall or something, right? Yeah, it's small. And what was the what was the detector that's red? What is that thing doing? It's detecting what? It's a static, uh, static sensor. Static sensor. Okay. So it's it's ta uh, static electricity or. St yeah, it's gone now. See. Yeah. Is that light blue? Like what in like that blue, yeah. Yeah. Shit, man. <laughs> but so, they, that, so but you didn't see that when you were filming it though. I was no, like, you had to replay no. it. So so you didn't get creeped out or anything. It wasn't like you didn't get a weird no. thing, like nothing like that. It's it's uh it's all the stuff you don't see what what freaks you out. Yeah, right. Right. So after that, then stuff the started walking around your house, that's where you get, like so you started hearing footsteps in your house. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really like that. That was uh, a bit annoying. Mm, um, and then it just stopped after a while. Yeah, after a while it stopped. Um, but then I stopped doing, stopped poking the bear as well. So you know, this is what happens. But mm. the next bit of footage is really good. So this was taken in 2015. That's actually in my book, and um, I've been sitting on it for a few years because I didn't know what to do with it really. But um, now I'm going to put it into the public domain to see what you think. But so I took the, that strobe with this this because I've had this strobe for a while. Mm -hmm. before, and I went to uh, basically a woodland in the middle of nowhere up in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. And the same test again with static uh, sensors and strobe. 
And we didn't see this happen because it happened so fast that um, you, you just didn't see it. It literally happens within a, a couple of frames. So I'm going to show you this and see what you think. So first. You can see the static. I mean, you can see the static sensor light up, though, visually. You can look, look at it and go, hey, that's lighting up, right? Well, it, it did, but it didn't happen in. Oh, what's happening there? Hang on, yes. Yeah. So. Elongated this skull. skull. Yeah, this, this is a skull that's uh, found in Peru with the elongated heads. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the eye socket and okay. this look here. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, I want you to watch this. Oh. Can see it right in the middle. See the. See the eye socket? Yep. I can see it going right at the top, right? Wild. Is that like mist? Is that like fog or? See the light the light axe? Yeah. And this stuff this this is all happening like so fast that how I how I kind of interpret it is these guys uh, when when I when I set this thing off in the remote areas. These guys come and have a look to see what's going on. So, um, are you playing the tones too? Are you playing the? No, not at that point. No, that they were made later. Okay, um, so that so that that's just the light. That's not the 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 noise. And so, um, what it appears to be is these guys use a localized time dilation. So what that means is they're walking around normally, and we're in freeze frame. We are literally in slow motion. For them, but their their speed is normal. We're just like kind of slow motion freeze frame. Yeah, because they have they operate in their own tight separate time dilation. Uh, I suppose you could call it like a shadow biosphere. Whoa! So they can interact with us. They can see us. They can interact with us, but we can't. Them. We can't. It, it's all happening between the frame rate of our eyes. So because our because our eyes can't capture the frame rate, it's happening That's so right. fast. And I'm not sure if I think they wear something to to create like a bubble around them to do this, um, but it, yeah. I mean, this this is why people go like hunters and stuff go missing without firing a shot because they can't even see it coming. These <laughs> guys can walk between bullets. It's it, it's that they can walk between they can walk between walls and shit too, probably right. Yeah. I got another video, which is a bit more boosted. This is uh, so. What's what's creating the the smoke there? The fog was that just like the normal yeah. air there? This is a bit more slow motion, and it's been upscaled a bit. There he is. I mean, it's huge. Mm -hmm. Wow! And this is actually a short version. Of a much longer video where you see a lot more turning up. Those people just want the, so those things are just keep showing up and poking their head in there and checking it out. Yeah. Do you guys have like a campfire going on or something? What's the smoke? No, no, it's just mist, I think. Whoa. And you can see its head bend down. You see the back of his head, you look yeah. at his skull, and then you see his face. Yeah, that's kind of scary looking. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a nightmare fuel right there, buddy. Wow. You know, it's interesting that that mist rolls in right out at the same time, too, because there's been a lot of reports about this mist that happens around paranormal stuff that just shows up. So, so like, I mean, you can't see this visually. I mean, you didn't see this at all, right? No. I mean, you didn't, you no. didn't, no, no, no. You, and you didn't get the creepy feeling or anything? No, none of that. No. no, it's so fast that it's, it's actually in, a little bit intimidating because you realize that you just don't have a, a, a chance in hell if it all goes wrong. <laughs> um, you never see it coming. <laughs> you don't. So it's, it's, that's, that's really it. I mean, wow. Um, so do you think that you think that the Peruvian elongated skull people are, are still a 
a, a species that exists in a shadow biome surrounding us at all times and that we can't see because our frame rate of our eyes can't pick it up. Needs to be. Hmm. Do you think these are related to the orbs, the spears, type one, hmm. two, and three? You think they're all part of it? I think they built it. Wow. I mean, from the from the size of the eyes, they look to be subterranean, so they probably live underground. Right. Um, but it has to be, that thing's massive too. I mean, if that thing was, you know, your device is like 12 inches or something, hmm. right? And that thing is eight foot, nine foot tall, maybe? I mean, bigger? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So... So the thing is, I know um, where a couple of these locations are in the UK. I mean, I know everyone knows about Skinwalker, but there's actually a couple of Skinwalkers in the UK as well. Wow. So hopefully I'm going to go and do a couple of documentaries down there. Just do uh, same, you can use the strobes, use your, use thing, the yeah. tones and um, yeah, try to film and get all that. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know we talked about it and maybe I jumped ahead, but man, I mean, if you can figure it out and you know where it's at, how can you catch one? Well, <laughs> what you mean the spheres or you mean it, one of these guys? Either, either. <laughs> both. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I don't know. Well, I think you've got more chance of picking them up that have malfunctioned. Um, okay. okay. So I when think, they get, when they blow up or something, right? Yeah. Something like that. I think you've got more chance of that than actually grabbing a life one. Um, but as I said, there's more news coming out about that in a few months, hopefully. Right, right. So that was part of the, one of the things you can't talk about, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> now the bets, the bets fear is the you know one of the ones that's been in um, historically in the 70s. It was the one that the guy found in Florida, and you'd put it on the ground, it would roll around, and do a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, and I don't remember the end up the end of the story in that one. I don't know how that one ended up. Um, I know a bunch of people try to say it was a hoax and. Um, you know, people just said they didn't know, and I don't know if that thing's still around or, um, or what, but, um, that could potentially be a type three, type two. Uh, that would have been uh, from, well, from the size of it. I would assume that would be a type, uh, uh probably a type three. Okay. okay. Yeah. They are, they are some, some are, you know, about this big, some are much smaller. It's mm -hmm. there. I mean, I, the, the, the type size I kind of specify are general types. Okay. Just by flight behavior and their flight logic and stuff, but right. But they could be any size. They could be you know this big. Yeah, or the, yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's a combination of like old tech with new tech. Okay, got but it. the older stuff might be a bit bigger, and the new stuff might be smaller. Right, right. There's like cars, man. Cars exactly, are still huge. Yeah. <laughs> He's exactly. big, right? Right. So you think that? I mean, from the yeah. looks of it, it's blowing stuff up out of orbit. It's protecting Earth, right? In a way. Um, the shit's everywhere. I mean, obviously, Arrow put that video out of that that orb, but they didn't know what it was. Fine, we've got videos of it all over there. You got tons of videos. People see it all over the place. It doesn't seem to be harming humans unless you are indirectly ignoring its its transmissions to to get away, right? Mm -hmm. Like the hey, get off, get off, get away. But then if you don't, you you get the headaches, you get the, the mm -hmm. all the symptoms from radiation or microwave, um, you know, injuries which is like kind of the Havana thing in a, in a way, maybe, maybe. Um, but you can bait it a little bit, maybe, yeah. right? And, and you can yeah. interact with it via the tones, the frequencies. Yeah. It's digital. It's sending signals that we've been able to pick up. You pick them up mm -hmm. in the static of audio recordings. Um, it, and it's 18-bit, right? Like you said, because you've decoded it. It appears to be. Okay. To be. Some spectral anal analyzation there. You can kind of figure out what, what it's trying to do. So it's a technology that surrounds us. It's interesting that the, the humanoid, the beings uh, are completely cloaked, but these orbs at times are just visual. They're just there. Um, mm. you, you know, yeah. like it, it, we see them, uh, we see um, at other times they're yeah. coming through walls and, and they're kind of cloaked and we can see them in infrared a lot better. But there's, I mean, a lot of the videos you show me are dudes with iPhones just sticking, you know, like, Hey, what is that shit? They're going outside and they're seeing it. Right. And we're picking it up. Well, I mean, if if you if you're um, I mean, it might be a case of when they're cloaked, they can't transmit or can't receive signals or can't can't or do what they need to do. Much signals, like you know, they're probably more capable when they're visible than not. Um, yeah, that's probably the most likely. Yeah. So you got this information to Gillibrand a year before the first uh, UAP hearings. Yeah. Um, through somebody. Um. Have you had any other interactions with the U.S. or U.K. or the Five Eyes nations about any of this stuff? No, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, I seem to be just um, ignored. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's good. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, the, the the thing is, is it's kind of strange because, I mean, I, I spoke to um, Travel Channel producers and uh, producers of other stations as well. Yeah. And they all say, oh, yeah, you're right, you know, but they don't want to change anything. They don't want to change their format. They don't want to change. They already have a, a money-making format. Okay. That uh, like the mystery box kind of thing. So they they make a lot of money out of that, and they're not interested in changing it. Um, I mean, it makes me wonder. Like maybe if I mean if I can figure stuff out with pretty much zero budget, I'm I'm amazed that people with a budget can't. Right. Or can and they? And they're just keeping that. it quiet. Right. That could be the thing. Can they figure it out? Have they figured it out? And they don't want anybody to know about it. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's it just seems to be funny. Funny. So. Uh, the the only real option I have is to make my own kind of uh, documentaries and put them out on X, um, and see where they go. Um, right. That's that's kind of what I'm thinking about doing now. Right, but it, I mean, going back, and I know you can't talk about signing the NDA that you talked about, <laughs> or you know, potentially or whatever. But there was definitely some interest in somebody, some some people, some parties or, or companies or whatever. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And, oh, yeah. um, and, um, even if you were working with them and you did sign that, you probably couldn't say anything about it, um, at, at that point. So somebody's taking it serious enough to at least engage you, engage with you on, on that front. Right. Um, well, I mean, from, just from what I hear, I think, uh, I think, uh, a lot of people take it very seriously. It's just that it's not in the public eye. Right. And, and that's probably on purpose though, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah. They, they so, don't want you talking, right? I mean, you and I, I mean, we've talked you know, offline, obviously for two years back and forth going, Hey, do you want to do an interview? No, I can't. No, I can't. No, I can't. So what, what uncorked you now to be able to talk to me, uh, you know, after two years, what is it, was there a, a time stamp on that thing that you signed? Was it, was it something that, um, um, not so much that it's, it's more that, um, these things, things have kind of settled down now. So it's certain things are you know underway and now I am free to do what I want to do. Um, that that way it appears to be. Um, okay. Okay. So no one's, no one's stopping me now. So I was going to say that. I mean, so like everything that we put out, I mean, it's <clears throat> fair game, right? Nobody's going to get pissed that we we talked about right. all these things. Okay. okay. Because but, the end of the day is that because I'm not government or any anyone from you know who's worked for any one sort of intelligence or something like that. The truth is, no one cares. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you could have, have a like. The, the CIA guy, was it CIA guy, David Grush? Yeah. He, people care what he says because of his position. Right. 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 But uh, so it doesn't matter what I say. People, you're, just a, people know. you're just a dude. That's it. And actually, as I said, that's probably the safest way forward because um, if government says anything about this stuff, people would, would, would freak out mm -hmm. um, to a degree. Um, so it's better for one person, civilian, who's had no access to anything, anything, mm -hmm. to figure figure something out, than and then spread that through social media somehow, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, than it is to anything from government. Right. So I mean, like, so that you, you you don't have any problem with people trying to replicate what you're doing, obviously, right? I mean, I don't care. Yeah, okay. I mean, they can do it, right? I mean, obviously, yeah. they could. We could. You could do that in in a way to to bait these things. I mean, um, the app. I don't know if you have still have the app with tones or whatever those tones are. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean you, know? you can you can buy the strobe and you can buy the apps. Just yeah. go out and use them. Um, and pe people have done it, and some people have got real crazy experiences. Uh, some people refuse to buy one and refuse to use it. Really? <laughs> yeah, because they're scared. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so. Wow. It's, it's uh it is what it is um, so it's like the hitchhiker effect you know i just thought about this when you're talking about you know you did this next to your house you, and the shit came home with you i mean that's what they talk about skinwalker ranch you know you have the experience and the stuff comes home like even you know across the world across the country i mean there's a lot of correlations here with a lot of this other stuff that, that skinwalker i mean aside from the uh cattle mutilations i, I don't know <laughs> like i don't know if that's happening for you but um it, it seems like there's it seems to be a lot of correlations here with um you know visual things um yeah I, I think it's the same show all over the world and yeah. i think it's it's uh it's the same um it's the same functions the same processes the same effects it's, it's the same thing all over the world it's just depending if people can see it or not 
I mean, as a there's a you know a top professor recently said, um, can you see what's happening in front of your eyes? It's like an IQ test. Hmm. You know, some people can look at one thing and see something completely different from what other people see. Right, and that's right. really what the what the problem is. Um, yeah. Uh, you get that in computers as well. You know, you, you get some users saying, oh, it's this problem, and then you look at it and it's something completely different. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's what it is. And it, and that that kind of perception or, or you know, that is, that's that's the, our limitation. Right, right. So, I mean, if this, I mean, this is real, it's happening all over and it's repeatable, it's baitable, we can bring it in, we can make it happen. Anybody can do it anywhere. We know it's there. But then yeah. the question is, what we can do about it exactly yeah then what can't do anything about it really no because i, I kind of have a a th like a thought process like this is what if um the primates wanted disclosure on humans the primates think they're the king of the jungle you know super powerful creatures how would that go down and it probably won't go down very well the, the truth is is that it doesn't matter how much the primate domain would want access to the human domain. It would never happen. It would never happen. It's just because they can't function within our society, really, other than being in a zoo or, um, you know, some lab lab creature. And I think it's the same kind of thinking is, is with the uh, these guys. is They live here just like we do, probably in a different area, somewhere remote. Uh, and they just like, you know what, you guys get on with it. We'll just get on with this and, and we'll just keep you out of trouble. And that's, and that's basically it. I mean, you've got to remember is a human beings are highly reactive creatures and, mm -hmm. um, especially when you have nuclear weapons as well. Right. So if you have like, um, you know, craft coming in from elsewhere, you don't know what they are, we're going to react kind of in a negative way. Right. So what they're doing is stopping us from going, from going nuts really and, and doing stupid things. Wow. And then and I think I think that's really what it is because if if we start if we start you know using nuclear weapons on the planet, it'll affect them as well. Right. We're just, yeah, we're blowing up their home and ours at the same time. The but mm. the thing the thing is is the you know they're taking these things out that are coming out of orbit. I mean hypothetically they're coming in here. How do we know that those aren't that that, that whatever they're taking out isn't um, is hostile or not hostile? You know maybe, maybe they're maybe whoever's coming in are trying to help us out. Maybe we don't know. I don't know. Um, right. You know what I mean? Know. So we have this, we have this global defense network that we didn't ask for that we didn't, we mm -hmm. didn't participate in. It's happening around us. We can't really do shit about it. Um, it's gentle with us in a way that it's not killing us overtly. It's telling us to get out of the way when things are coming in, you know, get out, get out, get out, you know, it's being nice. Um, but if you stick around, you're screwed. Um, and it's doing things, uh, without any of our input whatsoever. It's just, it's just taking shit out of the sky, apparently. And that could That's be right. somebody coming to free us from whatever these things are doing. Maybe these things are suppressing consciousness. Maybe they're they're keeping us from seeing them. Maybe they're doing things like that through technology. Who knows, right? I mean, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Um, um, don't it's know. it's speculative, uh, all of it, obviously, but these things exist. These balls drop out of the sky. Yes. Yeah. People have them. People may have, may or may not be doing tests on them. May may or may not have done tests on them. They 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 showed up. The bet spheres one. I, you know, mm -hmm. we can't talk about the one that you may or may not have have known about or know about. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> right? Um, there's people that are looking into it. Have done tests. Whatever. At some point, uh, we're gonna you know our, we're good at figuring shit out and then reengineering it. Right. So at some point, we're gonna figure out um, how to get into it and then how to how to do something right for good or bad uh, potentially and, yeah. um, potentially um i mean i think the reason why there's so much secrecy in the ufo subjects yeah is because technology is is the most heavily resort um source after resource on the planet okay so yeah. a new kind of microprocessor or a new kind of material mm -hmm. a new kind of wiring system something like that um, right. these things are worth trillions right you know, so, and the, the person who has the better technology has the better weapons. Right. Of course. Right. We so, weaponize the shit out of everything, no matter what. Right. Yeah. Weapon yeah, first. So yeah, yeah. If, if, for instance, say the defense industry does have these objects, mm -hmm. they're spending trillions of trying to reverse engineer them. Right. 
to use it for weapons. They ain't going to give that. They ain't going to give that up for no one because right. they've put so much money and effort into it. Um, and you've got to remember is that these objects are probably very dangerous. Mm -hmm. They're not like doorstops or anything. They're probably quite dangerous. Well, if so, they're emitting the radiation, for God's sakes, right? You know, right now, you know that it's like, going to affect you. Yeah. Even the large, say, like the larger crafts. Right. I mean, you don't know what the power source is. You don't know how if if it's got a some sort of security system on it. You don't know anything. Um, right. So you you literally are going in like uh, completely naive to what you're dealing with. Right. So yeah, I mean, you can't blame the defense industry for saying you're not having our toys. Mm -hmm. uh, or you know we've spent trillions trying to work this stuff out and you're not having it you know and it doesn't matter what the politicians say right it is what it is and and uh and at the end of the day if if we've got them then probably china has them or russia has them as well and right. there's probably a race going on to see who can get the patents first right right of course so you know or that race so that, has already been won yeah. by somebody right i mean that's potential too the race has already potentially been won but potentially um, i mean one or more all right but um but yeah i mean just follow the money and and that, that basically tells you the story um, right. i mean there's things on this planet that i i think uh probably weren't built by humans and like the pyramids i don't think they were built by humans right uh they their engineering is amazing um mm -hmm. certainly outside the scope of what we can do even now right so <laughs> you know if you want evidence of alien life or whatever just look at the pyramids um in my opinion yeah. um but again you see unless unless uh be, at the end of the day if doesn't matter what a civilian says because no one believes them mm -hmm. you know tomorrow um you know the buses will keep running the the, the planes will keep flying right right you know, that's that's really that is the safest option, really, for disclosure to happen through a, a civilian than a government. Just like the Bob Lazar. I mean, you know, what, what, 40 years ago or whatever, 30 years ago, he shook the whole world up, right? And people still talk about him. So, yeah. you know, he was yeah. just a guy. I mean, he happened to work at a play, supposedly, right? I mean, yeah. But, but still, I mean, he wasn't a full, you know, a full bird colonel, right? Who came out and started telling everybody, like, you know, the government has this or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, all I want to do is is go out and and test stuff and look at stuff and and put science behind it, right? Uh, and then give my give you my best option. I'm not sure if I'm 100 percent right, mm -hmm. but you know, I kind of do reverse engineering for a living, um, so it's like it's like you know, I work. I'm a I, I work, I'm a I, I'm a database um, uh, specialist and soon to be architect, and I do reverse engineering on databases every day. You know, yeah. so what I've done was. A, Apply the same thing to the paranormal or poltergeist originally, and then I start finding these spheres, and then I find these uh, emitting signals, and then it's like, well, no wonder people are passing out because they're emitting all this radiation. Yeah, you know, and it's it, it, once you break the once you figure this out, everything else just clicks into place, and it's it's, it's obvious. It's right. um, it's obvious, and um, it's really for everyone else to catch up. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. Like you said, you get citizens, you get normal people involved and you get them to replicate the same thing, right? Yeah. yeah. Get them to do it. Get them to go out there and turn these things on. I don't know, but you're inviting shit into your house, whatever it is, <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to bring it home with you a little bit, you know, which is just kind of spooky. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess uh, having no, no defense against them is probably scary enough, right? Um, you know, we talked about maybe cloaking yourself or cloaking, you know, how, how to keep mm -hmm. the keep the interference away from you there's got to be a way hmm. to keep them off of you somehow maybe i don't, I don't yeah. know what that is you know um i wonder you know i've had experiences where i've gone out a group of people meditate you know asking the asking something to come down and show and you know and i got there's videos on my my pot you know my youtube and of you know orange orbs dropping down hanging out checking yeah. out um, you know, my friend Jay, you know, Project Unity, same thing for him, right? You know, he goes, mm -hmm. they had the same type of experience. And there's people all over that have that experience. I wonder if these, um, I wonder if these um, orbs are part of that um, global defense network. And I wonder if. I think so. Yeah, I think it's the same. Yeah. You think I that think we can co somehow communicate with them te telepathically or or something? Maybe something like that. Yeah. Uh, there might, there must be a mechanism there somewhere. Right. So 
to interface with humans, right? Not not to be a technology, but for our you know biological technology, right? Mm. Yeah, um, something like that. I mean, as I say, what it needs is a bit bit more money, a bit more research, and and that's it. But um, you know, whenever I watch these TV shows and stuff, they're always doing stuff that is it's like you you're doing everything that uh, you shouldn't be doing, <laughs> not the things you should be doing. <laughs> you right. Know? So it's like, it's just what it's kind of feel. so whenever you watch these things, you're always like, well, what aren't they doing? That's, that's why aren't you doing that? That's just doesn't make sense. You know, and I, I get the feeling that the modern TV media as a, as a whole um, yeah. is kind of like the rule of thumb is speculate all you want, but you can't, you're not allowed to prove anything. Well, yeah. Well, like you said, if you prove it, I mean, you just cut off the money train, right? Like we talked about, like you just, uh, you know, no, we figured it out. Can't have episode 10 now because, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to get to that. Right. Yeah. But that's Uh, what we are. So um, I think I would, for myself, I mean, hopefully I have a few more interviews lined up now. I'm going to become a little bit more public than I, I have been. And um, hopefully going to start doing documentaries as well. Um, So yeah, there's, there's, Plenty more to come. Good. And then maybe, you know, maybe one day you can tell me about that NDA you signed. <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> about why and what and with who and, you know, whenever it expires and does it ever expire? Uh-huh. Why can't you talk about it anymore? Uh-huh. What happened? What happened? <laughs> um, you know, uh, one of the things that I got, I asked a bunch of people, I was like, hey, you got any questions? And one of the, one of the questions I have um for my Patreon. I'm joking. I don't have a Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> was, um, when your book, um, um, how did you meet Steve Colburn and how did your, how did your team and how did, oh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses on. Look at that. Probably be, it's like, it's like to be my, you got to put your bifocals on. All right. How'd you meet Steve Colburn and um, what was his skill set brought to you? And wasn't he the same guy that was in Patient 15, Jeremy Corbell's movie? Okay. So I know that. I know Steve Colburn was oh. part of Jeremy Corbell's movie and uh, Patient 15. And he was Patient 15. And yeah. uh, how did you hook up with him? And what what did he, what, what was his skill set that helped you out with your book? Um, he was the only one who had um, done the material analysis on a sphere. Oh, at, so he, he had a time. sphere? He had a sphere at some point? Yeah. Yeah. He he tested the um I forget who owns it. Um I think it's a guy in Mexico. And okay. um okay. he he uh he did a material science analysis on it. And at the time when I was writing the book, he was the only one who had. So I just, you know, we started talking and stuff and I put his analysis in my book. Um and that's it. Wow, yeah. that's wild. So he, so like somebody in Mexico got one of these or like one of these, yeah, and, and did a material a- analysis on it. And you found like you found him by Googling or whatever, right? Yeah, like, Googling, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, wow, wow, wow. Uh, and yeah. then it was uh, actually by fluke because, um, I, I, I wanted to speak to him anyway about some other stuff. And I said to him, Oh, I'm writing a book about Sears and stuff. He goes, Oh, yeah, I've got one, I've, I've tested one of those. I was like, that was, I was like, all right. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it was jackpot, really, jackpot. And um, that that's why I included it. Um, wow. That's that's wild. Yeah, I didn't know that anybody had actually done, done a material analysis on, on a, mm. a down sphere, right? The, like, I don't know if they did that with the bet sphere either. I don't know. Do you know if they did that? You know, the one, the, the, big, the famous yeah, bet sphere? Yeah, um, they did some tests on it. Uh, I did. It, they didn't cut it up or anything. Uh, no, okay. They did some tests on it, and they found that uh, there was lots of anomalies with it. Okay. Um, but, but they didn't like chip a piece of metal off and stick it under an electron microscope. Not aware of. No. Okay, but the one. So what was the one that Colburn? What was? Um, can you give me the breakdown and like was that completely wild or was that like normal? That was bigger. So that that appeared to be the type uh, type one. So it was quite a large one. Okay. Uh, size of, a, of a, like a um, of a beach ball kind of size, you know. Right. Uh, and that one actually was damaged. So that one hit the ground so hard it exploded. Oh shit. Uh, and they actually killed the cow, like in the fields and stuff. Uh, but it didn't uh, destroy the whole thing; it just blew out the insides. So it just, the whole insides just just turned to to explosion. And, but what was left was like a an outer shell, and that's what uh, was tested. 
Wow. And did, was that like material not found on earth, things like that of that, that nature? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's basically, a, um, well, according to him, um, it was a, um, it was a manufacturing technique that we can't replicate. Wow. So it's outside of our material science to, to, to replicate these, these things. But probably terrestrial materials, but we can't replicate kind of. So it was like, you know, aluminum yeah. and all these things, yeah. but we, but we can't, you know, wow. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've met so many times that these, these spheres, I think they're, they're a lot like finding a microchip in 1910. You know, you might test one, but it might not have anything, you know, amazing in it. Um, but uh, the engineering is is out of place, and um, I think um, yeah, I think that's that's what it is. I mean, if if you're going to build like a global defense network, you wouldn't use rare earth minerals. You have to use common common materials, right? To, because you have to build it from what you have here, what's available to you, right? Yeah, just just, just like we do now, mass pump them out. So yeah. you you can't have a material source source uh, you know a limitation. Right, uh, or could you be dependent on mining stuff externally? You'd have to, you would all have to be here. So, um, I think uh, if there is a, any sort of testing on these things, that's what they would find. Wow! So it's like it's here. It's just it's just made with uh, in a way that we can't replicate. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that you know it kind of makes sense for a lot of the you know the parts. Um, you know the material analysis. I know that Gary Nolan's done a lot. Um, you know Jacques Vallee's parts. You know. Oh yeah. That they're all, well, you know, these are all the elements that we have. I mean, these are all the, you know, all, all this shit here, but it's, you know, a, a thousand times more pure, right? The aluminum is a thousand times more pure mm -hmm. or the whatever, right? The magnesium, and, or we don't understand why you would put, um, you know, these two metals together, right? Because it doesn't make any sense to us. Why would you do that? Or, or you know, layer them so thin and things like that, right? So, so we don't have any understanding. But all this stuff, it's not like some element, some kind of metal that doesn't exist in, in our solar system, right? It's It's all the same kind of bits and bobs it's just crammed together yeah. differently right yeah that's right that's right i mean in in many ways though our, our kind of our the analysis process is a very slow one because mm -hmm. imagine like finding a um imagine like being a caveman and finding a, a ferrari or a bmw you know in, in a no idea what you're gonna and do you scrape off a little bit of paint and you're like okay we'll test this and there's nothing in there but, but you know and that's how it is so you, you you're testing all these minute little bits yeah so right it takes forever takes forever yeah hmm. wow well shit, man i wish you could tell me more i mean um on my twitter i i have lots and lots of pictures now of the uh the seers uh, doing, you know, their their formations and intercepts, chasing right. down UFOs. Um, I just don't know. Either people can understand it and get with it, or they they just don't want to understand it. Right. I, I don't. Yeah. I just I, I just can't understand why. I can't yeah. see a problem trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, no. I, I understand. Yeah. They just like you said, just get it out there, being a being a normal citizen, and see what see what happens. Yeah. No, so and when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. This this network is for, when you really think about it, it explains the the Fermi's paradox, the Fermi paradox. As in, uh, where are all the aliens? Well, they're kept out because the system keeps them out. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It explains poltergeist activity, which is you know been a big mystery forever. Right. It also, I think, explains spontaneous human combustion. Whoa. Because I think what happens is that if you if you're um, too close to these things when they're relaying, yeah. depending on the distance between the type three and type twos, will depend on the will will um, increase the um, the output. You know the the signal strength, the the, the power power outage. So you're blocking the so, power between the two, and, and it, it just burns through you. Yeah, yeah, I think so. If if you just happen to be in the way, then Whoa. you're gonna get you're gonna get uh, fried. Wouldn't like and cow, cows they, and all kinds of shit would be blowing up like that. I mean, it'd be like anything. Well, though, right? I mean, that's, I think it's, uh, I mean, there's only actually been a couple of hundred cases of, of it in the world. Right. So it's almost like there was some sort of upgrade that went out and then it was retracted. <laughs> that's, that's what it kind of sounds like, you know. <laughs> well, hey, we messed that one up. We keep burning people. We got to yeah, bring, bring yeah, that back right. and uh, get this to get that beta test didn't work out well. But that's, that's how it, logically that wouldn't make sense. Right. 
Well, I, I mean, I know we're reaching here, but how do abductions come into any of this? Is that part of the same? Probably not. No, I, mean, I, I don't, don't know. know. I mean, I, my, this is just me speculating. Yeah, right? speculation. I mean, obviously, I mean, I it's speculation, like, right? Like, for, in order to, to do abductions, um, you would have to have access through the firewall, through, yeah. through, the, through the network, which right. means it's highly likely that it's the ultra terrestrials doing it. Or unless they're unless they're not they're like well if these things are dropping out of the sky and they're failing, maybe they can be beat too, right? Maybe they maybe they yeah, are maybe, fallible. Maybe it's a bit of both. Yeah. Maybe they're fallible in some regard, yeah. right? You know. Yeah, maybe it's a bit of both. You mm -hmm. don't know. Um, right. Right. Uh, either way, you know, it's we we have very limited defense against it, and uh, it's yeah, it's what it is. I can't believe that. I think we got. I mean. If you figured out how to how to make these things appear by frequency tones and you know the strobing of light, I mean, for God's sakes, we, we should be able to beam whatever it's beaming at us back at it. I mean, the mimicry is one of the you know what I mean. If we can get whatever that that signal is, right, mm. you just blast that back at it. At least you can piss it off. I mean, I don't know. I mean, no, maybe maybe um, I did the, actually when, during one of my tests actually uh, it's <laughs> I um. I wanted to see what would happen. So if the if the type three spheres are AI based, as I say. Right. So what happens if you blind the sensors? Right. Yeah. So I was thinking, okay, well, if it acts like our own aerospace, like our own aircraft. So you have in our own aircraft, you have um the flight computer and then it has the sensors around the plane, which which you know fly the plane for you. Right. But if you get the data's cropped, if you give the, the sensors corrupt data. Will you overwhelm them or something like that? Then the planes start to act up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like a denial so, of service right. attack, right? Like a DDoS attack. Yeah. So I, I kind of did that in 30 East Drive to see what would happen. And and uh the sensors went wild, actually. The the every, there was all sorts of funny things going on all, all around the house. Um and it sounded like it it had some sort of uh, system crash or something. Really? Uh, yeah. And then it then it reboots and then comes back online again holy shit so what'd you do how'd you do that did you flood it with the same frequency the no 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 i just blinded it i strobed so you just, strobe. just strobed everything just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. because if if um these things are using uh, um some sort of night vision to you to to see around them they're not they're not emitting infrared if they were you could you could easily see them just right just like we can see infrared like lights and when you have a yeah. infrared camera you see an infrared light yeah yeah so, uh, so they must be doing it passively so they must be amplifying photons that are hitting the surface of the sphere of the of the object which is of the surface of the sphere so you just overwhelm it you blind you just it just flood it yeah just like yeah. flooding it with it whoa and the ai goes crazy because it's just like it, what's going on because it can't take in all that information it can't take in all the data yeah, or well, it's corrupt, corrupt data, and then right. it, it, they all freak out and have a freak out, and, and uh, that's what seemed to happen. So, what uh, happened? All the sensors just started going nuts. Was like, yeah, yeah, sensors went nuts. Uh, we were hearing all sorts of funny noises on on the mics. So, dart, it was like dancing around the rooms, um, like it gone haywire. Whoa! Uh, so, uh, and then it got quiet. Like it rebooted, got got quiet. And it went away. Yeah, and it came back up. Holy yeah. shit! So like, I mean, you could potentially drive that out of your place. And like, if you're living in a house and this shit's going on and you don't want it there anymore, you could potentially just keep that shit up until it decides to go away or blow your stuff up. Right. Well, um, this is why I say like, um, whenever you go near these like haunted houses, like yeah. proper, bad places, you'll notice that buildings around them are also active as well, but just not as much, you know, whenever you say, oh, this house is haunted, they'll say, oh, my house is a bit haunted as well. Or, you know, uh, you know, like people in the area. So, oh. you know, obviously, like if you, if you talk about networks, then you're talking, uh, that's uh, load balancing. So it's like, mm. if, if it can't go through the main route, it will redirect it through another. Right. As long as it's on the same general path, it, it will just redirect it. And I think that's, that's what's, what's occurring as well. So, you know, you might have one of these objects like in your attic and this, you probably can't see it. You don't know where it's there. It's, it's, uh, it, it will just sit there, um, uh, for passively. maybe two years passively. Yeah. And then once once in a blue moon, it'll it will fire up, start causing emissions. It will cause um, um, a diversion, like a banging, or something will fall over, and then um, and then it will shut down again. But why um, the hell, did, Patrick? Why are the hell? Why are they in the fucking house? I mean, they can't. I mean, before houses were here, <laughs> you know, 
what mm. in the trees like i mean like you know what i mean why is it why can't it just be in the fucking tree or I, why think, I think they use anything that shields the emissions so i think they also they they um i think they use holes in the ground that's oh. like uh you know a skinwalker when travis uh moved the the the, the top um like oh metal yeah like the shithole the- yeah the, the the septic tank yeah yeah and he yeah. got burned in he his got- face he got uh, he got uh, hit with radiation, and he, right. he uh, was in a bit of a bad state. Yeah. So I think they operate in the ground, or uh, as in holes in the ground, caves, whatever. Use, yeah, I think they use anything that shields the emissions. So even under bridges, even tunnels, even caves, or um, but obviously, like any network, it, it it has to go where it has to go. It has to have that connection to make it to make it work, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and I think. I think uh, a big part of it is is roots right through populated areas. Right, right, yeah that that made that makes sense that they're just there. I mean, they do care. Enough. I mean, the, it's interesting that they give a shit enough about humans to to ward us off. You know what I mean? Like they they care they care about like the baby the baby thing was huge. You know the baby uh, hmm. stroller. I mean that was massive. You put you put that thing on there and it keeps pushing it away because you know the yeah. AI knows. So they they have to give a shit a, a little bit of a shit about us because if not yeah. they would they wouldn't yeah. even they wouldn't be doing the whole Boulder guys thing. They wouldn't be moving us out of the yeah. way. They would just be we we vaporized you right. Like mm. it's interesting to think about that you know because if they didn't really care and mm. they have that power they would just uh, whatever right. So maybe it's a maybe it's a symbiotic relationship. They need us for something. Maybe. Maybe they'll wipe us out, you know. I don't. Maybe they eat us. I don't. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it seems to be that way. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, yeah. But it'd be interesting to find out if you know you could drive it out of the area, in a way, you know, like. Um, well, technically, if 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 um, if the so if if a, if a sphere is inside a building and there's there's too much um. Uh, how can you put it? It's like uh, too much interference uh, with it. Well, if if there's too, if there's a lot of people um, and a lot of constant problems, then it's highly likely it causes lag in the network. It, it causes a lag. So, so it's saying, look, I want to broadcast, but I can't because there's all these people in the way, right? Uh, I got, okay, yeah, it causes yeah, yeah. a lag. So if if I suppose the bigger the lag, it will then reach a point where it says. Enough of this. I'll go go next door. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like you said, it's just yeah. rerouting, right? Load balancing. It just needs to get away yeah. from it. Yeah. So yeah, there's probably not um a lot of, of of this happening in you know concert halls and like whatever large p- people get you know big group of people like football stadiums whatever right they're, I mean they're not probably hanging out. There's a bunch of people, but the, the best the best places are are deserted old buildings. Yeah. All the ones they say are haunted. <laughs> they, they, they're, you know it's why actually you know what you see these like these youtube uh, channels where they go to they find a house in the middle of the wood or something and it's, yeah and they go in there and there's some weird activity going on right right and it's perfect because you've got the building to to master your signatures and you're in the middle of nowhere yeah interesting you're right. yeah you would think though that if they had that type of tech why would they need to mask their signatures you think they'd be able to wait to mask it mask it anyhow but we're speculating on things that you know we have no answers to. I mean, that's just one of those things. I don't know. Happening. I mean, it, it depends on how good the sensors are on the other on the other the crops. Yeah, right. um, um, I did. I did think of this: is is that uh, so? If they're producing microwaves, and microwaves or high energy microwaves can heat the air, right? Yeah. So it could be why um, these buildings get so cold, because what they do is is that they're, they're purposely changing the temperature of the building to master the the heating from microwaves. Hmm. So if, if something's looking down at it, all you will see is a load of, of cold on the land. It won't see any sort of uh heat. It'll just, yeah, it will just it will just blend. And, and obviously if you look down on the on the earth through thermal, you find that there's more cold mm-hmm. than there is heat. So it just blends in. Wow. How the hell do they do that? How do they drop? I got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> need those for refresh. We just need to hook them up and use that as my, my, my air conditioner for my yeah. house. Yeah, just plug that shit in and have it go in the summertime. Right. Um, yeah. That would yeah, be that, rad. That's, that's how it seems to be. So, um, yeah. Wow. That's well, well dude, thanks again for, for, uh, hooking back up with me and, and, uh, you know, breaking it all down. I'm excited to see your, your, your new interviews coming out and your um, documentaries when you get those going. And 
I still want to know what you signed so that you can talk to me for two years. Uh, <laughs> one day. <laughs> one day. One day. We'll, one day we'll figure it out. Well, cool, man. Well, awesome. Well, thanks again. I mean, obviously, we'll I have all the links in the, in the description where everybody can find you in your book. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I think uh, I think you got something, man. I think it's rad. I uh, I'm excited. I'm not as scared of ghosts now anymore um, than I you know before we started talking, but I am more scared now of the things that are happening and frame rates around me that I can't process with my eyes. So there's that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, dude, that, I can't um, wait. I can't wait. So, thanks again, man. I appreciate it. Dude. Yeah, yeah, no problem. It's uh, it's it's always good to have a another IT person to talk to. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, easier, easier, easier. You know, it, it is. It is. We'll figure <laughs> it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs>